in the words of the famous Carl Sagan, somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known. I think those words are becoming reality. Liftoff from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. Most powerful space telescope. New era in astronomy. This is the James Webb. James Webb. The new James Webb Space Telescope. Taking its first steps in pursuit of cosmological discovery. President Joe Biden is set to unveil what astronomers all over the world have been waiting for for decades. Um, I want to see some very weird galaxies. That's what I want to see, like super weird stuff that I haven't seen before. We just found out about the, the five images that NASA will be publishing on Tuesday. And one of the images that it is taking is a large galaxy cluster, the type of objects that we work with. And we didn't know about this before. We just know that it is the deepest image of the universe ever taken, which I don't know what that really means. She thanked us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are, we are not sure what we are going to see. We're just, you know, itching to get our hands on this data. Today is a historic day. We're going to get a glimpse of the oldest documented light in the history of the universe. The first image from the James Webb Space Telescope. Whoa. Oh my gosh. The most powerful space telescope ever made and Canadian scientists helped create it. The project was undertaken by NASA, the European and Canadian Space Agency. This thing is pointed by uh, this uh, fine guidance sensor that Canada built. You know, so the unbelievable precision with, with, with which this thing can point on the sky, that's us. Several thousand experts collaborated on the project, including Professor Roberto Abraham from the University of Toronto, who worked on the telescope for 15 years and will examine images going forward. Let's come back to that picture. My jaw is still on the ground. Joining us to explain the significance. I want to bring in Lemia Mola. Product placement. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm an observational astronomer and I study galaxy evolution and we're trying to answer the question of like, is our Milky Way, is there something special about it? How was it formed and where is it going? This image from the James Webb Space Telescope, what did you think when you saw it? Literally our jaw just dropped because it, it was an image of a galaxy cluster in much more detail than we had ever imagined we would be able to see. Um, I think one of the faculties, uh, Marcin Savici, he actually brought out a bottle of, I shouldn't talk about that, <laughs> a bottle of whiskey that he's been saving for 30 years. <laughs> you know, it's, it's more beautiful than we imagined it would have been, um, and we just can't wait to start analyzing. I was a weird kid who wanted to do research and that's why I went to US. Like I wanted to do research no matter what. I wanted to go to MIT. My mom was very scared of sending me away because uh, I come from a conservative Muslim family. My mom saw a movie about Wells Day, Mona Lisa Smile and then she thought that this is pretty cool. It's all women sticking together. And Wellesley was cross-registered for with MIT, so I could actually take classes over there. But my parents wanted me to be a doctor, so I applied to Wellesley for a um, neuroscience program. But uh, what happened was that I went to Wellesley and the neuroscience course was full, and I needed a second class. So I signed up for astronomy. And by the end of the semester, I was kind of like, how can you not love the universe and ask more questions about it? So I am part of the um, Canucks team, which is the Canadian nearest unbiased cluster survey. It's one of the teams that contributed towards building um, one of the four instruments that are on the James Webb Space Telescope. This is the picture, which is the MIPS first deep field. So this is what the public saw, but what astronomers got um, was something like this. So you saw half the image. We got twice the data than what you saw, and we got it in all the different filters. We have about 210 hours allocated on the James Webb Space Telescope. I'll show you uh, our schedule. 
will be about 23 hours more of observation. Oh, that means like the entire Sunday actually kind of um, they will be observing our cluster, which is really cool. In two weeks time, the whole Canucks team, the Canadian team is coming to Toronto and we will all be working together for the first time figure out whether all the pipelines and everything that we have built for the analysis so far, how well they're working. Uh, category two is, is preparation for the near spec thing because that's like a month away. We cannot screw that up. That's top priority. Canucks has four working groups. So when we get the image from JWST and we want to know about the galaxies that we're looking at, we have to analyze the data in several different steps. Um, and we have broadly broken down these steps into four parts and each of these parts are done by a different working group. The job of working group one is to do an initial kind of cleaning or reduction of the data from the James Webb Space Telescope. And using that, we create models for the cluster galaxies in order to see the fainter, smaller sources behind them. So you can imagine someone is shining a big spotlight in your face, and then behind it, someone has lit a candle. And we're trying to measure how much light is coming from the candle. So we have to try to figure out how to get rid of that big spotlight. But you know, nobody's quantitatively shown that because you need two things, right? You need like, uh, you know, an exquisite uh, uh, resolution to see these little things, and then you need, uh, you know, uh, enough confidence in your treatment of the background that this stuff you can photometer. So we can do that. These so big, bright blobs in the image are sources in the galaxy cluster, which is relatively close to us. And so you can see, if I stretch the image so you can only see bright things, it's really primarily these cluster galaxies. And then if you zoom in, you can see that there's a lot of uh, structure in these it's, galaxies. It's, it's a headache. Yeah, look, it's this not is a, a headache, it's well, a proof. Like if you want, you're using something, you want people to test it, because how else are you going to find out if it's right or wrong? But I, you can't release garbage, because here's the thing is, you can't use releasing a catalog as a way to debug your catalog. BCG light removal, Grism redshift catalog, and photometric catalog, one paper, here is the SMAX cluster with everything done properly. And I Our know it's a role in the collaboration is to take processed images that we receive from the imaging group, which is working group one, and to provide measurements on those images to uh, working group three that fits physical properties. The process of our group is first to take a set of images that are all taken at different wavelengths, different colors, and to homogenize the resolution of those images. Bring them all from different resolutions to a single resolution so that we can make measurements on each of them and have a fair apples to apples comparison of those measurements. There is this error bar coming down here. I, I, you know, I bet my pet, maybe not my son, but I bet the bird that that's not. <laughs> <laughs> is that funny? <laughs> I bet the kid too. You know. He's a teenager now, I don't like him anymore. No, I love him. Just, what else we got? 5104? <laughs> this is fun, I'm enjoying it. I find all the galaxies and stars in the image. I measure their positions. And once I have their positions in hand, I measure the properties of the light. How bright are they in each of these images at each different color, each different wavelength. Uh, and then I compile those into a big table called a catalog, and I pass it off to working group three. And working group three takes this measurement of how bright the galaxy is and converts that into the physical properties of these galaxies. And doing this essentially tells us how massive the galaxy is, that's the stellar mass how old the galaxy is, whether the galaxy is obscured by uh, dust, and whether the galaxy is actively forming stars or whether it's an old relic, like it formed. It stopped forming stars well, at some point in the past. Uh, at the so position copy, here in the center, it has a magnification of 12,000. Okay. okay. Jesus so Christ. By the time the universe has expanded so much, so by the, the time it hits, the Doppler effect is yeah, the Doppler effect huge, because uh, okay. the universe is going boom. We so model uh, for each galaxy on the sky, and we use that to sort of build a full picture of how galaxy populations look like at different distances from us or at different ages. And so using all of these, we do all of our downstream science where we try to figure out like how galaxies form over time, how they stop forming stars, 
and uh, how they tend to change in their properties like the size as they are doing all of this. Finding yeah, I, like finding is, I think it's a good good thing to, to, to have both. 1.7. Oh, yeah. And then what Working Group 4 does is that we measure the sizes of these galaxies, how big these galaxies are, what are their shapes like, what their colors are like. In order to measure their sizes, we have to fit models to them. Um, after, you know, all these hundreds of lines of codes, what you um, find is you have the images of the galaxy and this is what the model is. Um, so this is the model that the Galfit has created and then here are the residues. Um, so there is not much residue left which means the model is a pretty good model and then using this model we can then measure the size of the galaxy in different wavelengths. Um, and now we know their sizes and shapes. This is 9643. That's a good idea. So 9643 is the cleanest, right? Yeah. Magnification of about a We had the first day of hack day. Everything is going smoothly. It was started off as a bit of a chaos. Because uh, first star is probably Nobel Prize. <laughs> no pressure. Adam is really after this Nobel Prize. No, I'm just like, this is, you know. Oh, yeah. Look, I can't afford my mortgage. I need the Nobel Prize. It's not that much, I hear. But, you know. <laughs> we are coming together. We found something very cool at the end of the day. It's a very interesting looking galaxy, um, which supposedly is about a thousand times magnif in a magnified region. A magnification of 10 is like, oh yeah, that's very high. <laughs> magnification of 100 is like, oh, I don't know if I believe this, but 1000 is like, okay. <laughs> I don't know if I build anything. So we will we'll continue, you know, looking into it tomorrow. And now we are gonna head off to team dinner. Because for them, they have to go through, you know, how. It was a bit open world, but like they didn't really have the. At the end of the day, what we saw is that we have actually a young universe, but we are finding something that looks old. So that's what was unique about this system. I don't know if you can see the number here, but it says 100. So the, uh, so the magnification model is showing us that this galaxy actually has a magnification line of 100 going through it. The stars were formed really early on, like just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. So the universe is about 4.7 uh, billion years old at that point, and the age of the star cluster itself is 4 billion years old. So, you know, the, some of the earliest star clusters that has been ever observed. So far, the results have held up. There have been actually other people who um, studied the same things and they actually confirmed that they also find that the star clusters are very old. So they also find that they're about 40 years old. That was actually a huge sigh of relief for us because as, as scientists, you always put your neck out every time you make a huge claim. So when they also found the same thing uh, with completely independent analysis, that also um, gave us uh, confidence that these, are, these might be um, actually old star clusters. And now we are waiting because we, uh, in cycle two, we have proposed to get spectroscopy of these objects to get even better data so that we can um, find their ages more precisely. We always think of scientists as these lone wolves. Science is very much a project that is done in team, in groups, and not by one person ever. 12 channels, 12 papers at the same time is not going to work. Yeah. Um, Did I uh, uh, possibly distract this for one minute with a story? God. Okay. <laughs> so thank you for, for making me lose it. My wife is super obsessed with massively multiplayer online role playing, role -playing games. Amazing. Okay. Like Warcraft and stuff. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, and so I've been watching her evolution, <laughs> playing these things for, for a couple of years. Right. And originally she sucked. Right, because it was like she would just do things uh, independently. Uh, now she's a god at this. She's like, uh, you know, super good at these MMORPGs. And, and she she said it's because she absorbed how you played it, which is, you know, you, you construct these using what, what they call the Holy Trinity, right? Which is the Holy Trinity is, you know, you have a team and some of the team, they're what is called tanks. 
you know, and tanks basically absorb the punishment from other people. And then other people are called the DPSs, which is basically they deal out all the damage. And then another group of people are the healers, and so they heal everybody else. And so how effective you are in that game depends on the composition of the team with everybody having a role. So like the spark for paper became a bazillion times better when you get engaged and suddenly um, you're like, this is bullshit, this is blah, 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 and, blah. and suddenly, you know, it, it, and so everybody had a role. And so uh, th that's that's why, you know, when we have like, you run off and you write this paper and then you run off and that, we're, we're, we're basically playing MMORPGs where everybody is trying to conquer the dungeon on their own, but really to kick ass, everybody should have a role and we should be like, you know, a, a cohesive team pulling together. And so like you cover my weaknesses and I absorb the damage, you know, and, and you, you deal it out, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Dude, I don't know why you're filming this, because there's no way what I just said. Thing after, oh, the visualizer is up. So okay. 10.30, are you guys ready? Ish. Ish. Okay. It's still uploading, changing permissions, and all that, so... No excuses. You will be ready. <laughs> well, you will see a visualizer. You will see a visualizer, but is it the visualizer? <laughs> Do you want to see? Yeah. The biggest challenge for me every day is dealing with my own negative thoughts, right? The imposter syndrome that I do not belong here. Everybody else around me is so much smarter than me. I shouldn't be here. And I wish someone told me that other people go to this as well. Yes. So this is the web galaxy explorer that Kartik and I have been building. So these are all linked plots. We have different physical properties from dense spaces fits and from the morphology fits with Galfit. The red is the max cluster. Yeah. The blue, oh my god. And the blue, yeah. And the blue is the smax. Yeah. Oh, what? And so you see that there's stuff in, in max that like this doesn't yeah. show up. That, 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 that's, you, you buried yeah. the lead, dude. <laughs> that, 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 that's the killer. Should we write it up, you think? I think I, well, or I, we just wanted to like open it up to anyone who wants to use it. We will put their data on it yeah, for them. I, I can't give you good advice on this because uh, for me, it's all magic. You guys should, uh, uh, you know, be on the cutting edge of of defining the use of machine learning to find outliers mm -hmm. in JWST. Yeah. You know, because that's that's effectively what you're doing here. We're so glad you're on board, Bob, because we were like, how do we sell this to Bob? No, I'm <laughs> you just You just had to sell it in MMO terms. I would have gotten it. <laughs> I really want you guys to just be, uh, you know, uh, extraordinarily visible, you know, and people are like, let me and Kartik did this genius thing and enabled us to do this stuff, right? And then you get all the credit for it and you're super famous and everybody's happy. Sure. Let me and Kartik just wants everyone to be able to have, data to, work have with. data to work with. We should be more ambitious. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Like, we should be thinking about yeah, exactly. these things more. Sparkler worked out great. We just need to... Uh... Dora is going to kill the whole thing by looking directly at the camera. <laughs> Currently, I am... Uh, preparing to go to Bangladesh, uh, which is where I'm from. And we're starting one of the first um, astronomy departments at a university level. My, my uh, philosophy has always been like, if you give someone the opportunity and find what they're really interested in, they will be good at it. When I was in Bangladesh, I knew nothing about astronomy. Um, and it took me coming to Wellesley and my first um, astronomy course to make me realize that astronomy is the coolest thing in the world like how come I didn't know about it that experience makes me realize that you know there are so many people around the world who just do not have that opportunity because they just don't see it around them the programs that I like to organize are the ones that I would have liked to see when I was a kid so Dunlap is giving um, a few has given a few telescopes and I'm helping start up an observational program where we can teach undergrads how to do observations from the ground. Families get to come with their small children, look through a telescope, ask questions. You may break it, <laughs> but that's part of uh, the learning to be something, right? You can just guide students towards what their interest is in. That's to me is like, the best feeling in the world.
astronomers actually never look through a telescope like they show in TV. I was uh, watching some movie yesterday and someone had that really long Newtonian telescope um, and was looking you know, behind it. It didn't even have an eyepiece. She was just like had her eye on the telescope. That's something that, you know, unfortunately we don't get to do anymore.